we're in a controlled paradigm, if we ever wake up to the fact that both parties are controlled, if we ever wake up to the fact that the same people that run the white supremacist groups run the liberal and socialist and communist and Jewish groups and other organizations, and that it's a controlled dialectic, it's game over. And that's what I'm here to try to get people to do is to think outside the box and to really see and understand the overall manipulation that is taking place and unfolding. We will do the fourth hour, the entire fourth hour today. Again, I did the fourth hour for about five years. For the first 12 years or so, I did three hours every day, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then for about five years, I did a fourth hour. But launching the nightly news and my other administrative duties, it was just too exhausting. But a lot of stations kept carrying the fourth hour, and I thought, you know, we're getting five hours a day on satellite for TV, four hours during the day, an hour at night for the nightly news. We just set all that up. Why not just have the fourth hour and truly get my reporters, who are smart folks, out of the box of taping shows? So we do the nightly news live sometimes, and they get really good after, say, a five-hour marathon nightly news. We do that you know, during elections and things, sometimes a 10-hour long. So we'll just start throwing everybody in the deep end of the pool every weekday in the fourth hour. Some days I'll be there. Some days you know, I'll post the whole hour and have a special guest. But a lot of days, most days, it will be Leanne McAdoo, Jakari Jackson, Darren McBreen, um, David Knight, and the rest of the crew. We'll have some of the writers in here. We'll have guests. Um, sometimes we'll have activist guests in. Sometimes we'll randomly get some folks off the street, bring them in here, think, see what they think about what's going on. We'll premiere a lot of stuff in the fourth hour as well. It's going to become probably the best hour of TV slash radio that we do every day. So the fourth hour is on satellite, TV and radio. It's back. Find showtimes, listings, details at InfoWars.com forward slash show. We'll be right back. Red Dawn came out in the early 1980s, and it parallels historically what's happened to other countries that have been infiltrated, that have been taken over. In this case, by a communist invasion from the South. And of course, it's fiction. But many times, fiction parallels reality. We have Central and South America in massive decline, collapsing. Mexico's been a failed state for about seven, eight years. It's my view that the phony drug war along with poverty and corruption of the government and the military, and I've had a lot of professors on that concur, is what has allowed Mexico to become a failed state with more than 100,000 dead that we know of in the last decade. That violence is now accelerating. Upwards of a third of Arizona has signs saying, do not enter these areas controlled by cartels. Our government can't and won't stop what's happening. The CIA has been caught working with the cartels, shipping a lot of the drugs in. Now, about a month ago, I went to the local theater, the local art house theater, the Arbor in North Austin, to see a film, Cartel Land, cartellandmovie.com. And I had followed the vigilantes in Mexico, uh, getting arms and defending themselves. I had followed the cartel and the government's response, but to see... The footage and the shootouts and the deaths and the, the safe houses and the police cooking the drugs and all of it added multiple dimensions to it. I've got to say, it's one of the most powerful documentaries I've ever seen. Matthew Heineman joins us till the bottom of the hour. I'm going to play the trailer for Cartel Land movie coming up here in a few minutes. And, and no, I'm not invested in it. No, I'm not selling it. I mean, I'm promoting it uh, because you want to see what the drug war is. This is it. And it was so fair. Uh, he didn't show the paramilitary folks on the Arizona side as just hillbilly racist. He showed them as human beings. And there's a little undercurrent of some racial stuff because that's honest. That's there. It, basically, he found what I found going to Arizona, going to South Texas, going over into Mexico. My reporter's going over into Mexico. But, but we've done nothing compared to what he did. I mean, you talk about dangerous uh, I've seen a lot of combat footage that troops have sent back that have been in combat two, three, four tours. 
and they didn't see this much action. Uh, so this guy deserves a purple heart and a bronze star for bravery uh, if journalism issued such awards. I want to open the phones up after I play several reports here on what you think about the shooting last week of the TV reporter and the cameraman. Now the cold-blooded murder of this sheriff's deputy in Houston. And are you watching the same news I'm watching, reading the same papers I'm watching? I mean, there's hardly any news out there. This is racially motivated. The Associated Press is still acting like uh, the sheriff's department is out of bounds for saying they believe it's connected to the national rhetoric being put out by Black Lives Matter. I mean, you better believe that if it was a white guy running around shooting black people, like with the Charleston situation, they would be saying it was racially motivated and then blaming all white people. Well, we're not blaming all black people for this. We're blaming mentally ill, unstable haters. And they need to be decried and, and explained to that this isn't good. When black people get murdered in cold blood, it's wrong. When cops get murdered in cold blood, it's wrong. When white people get murdered, it's wrong. It's just wrong. I don't sit there when nine blacks get killed and go, yeah, well, there's one for the white team. I go, there's one for the globalists who just orchestrated us getting in a fight with each other. And that's why I've been harping on this, because you see movies like Cartel Land, the globalists want to convert America into a police state, drug war zone. That's why the government ships the narcotics in. But the government with the big banks ships it in from the top. We have the congressional hearings in the 60s, the 70s, and the 90s. We have the declassifications. We have the big banks that have admitted to laundering hundreds of billions a year. They control it. Then they have Hollywood act like the drug culture's cool. There's a lot of money associated with it, so young people get involved. Your daughters become prostitutes. It degenerates the society. And now our economy is based on the prisons and the drug war. So you get involved in a gangbanger culture, MTV pushes it, acts like it's underground, the cops take the bait, try to shut down the gangster rap, everybody then thinks it's super cool, it goes white hot, uh, super platinum, the young people all start dressing like prisoners with their pants hanging down around their butts, the cops are trained that's the enemy, you're trained the cops are the enemy, and then you have a full-on war in America, which has been on slow burn. But I believe we're about to see a slow-motion race war, a slow-motion drug war that makes the 80s carnage and crime rates soaring look like a walk in the park. All the signs of destabilization are there. We're going into a depression. We have all these problems, and the system wants to brand it as racial so the globalists don't get the blame. And so the middle class, whether they be black or white, calls for law and order and gives up their rights because so many citizens and so many cops are getting killed. Then they're going to stage terror attacks, blame it on the liberty movement, and have a roundup of the liberty movement. There'll also be a roundup of the leftist black movement. And I'm telling you, that's where this is going. I told you long before this started reading the manuals, reading the documents, reading the restricted info that we got from our sources, published here, confirmed to be accurate, that the only way they could pull this off looking at their battle plan was with what you're now seeing. So we were able to project forward the enemy battle plan. It's actually easier than connecting the dots. So I want to take a few phone calls on this issue. Has the race war already begun? And how do we short-circuit it? I think you do like what happened in Charleston. Black folks, white folks, Hispanic, everybody coming together, prayer vigils, putting flowers at the church, decrying this little drug head, maggot that did it. Well, let's hear some people decrying what this latest scumbag did, shooting this cop. Turns out, didn't even know him. Hadn't done anything. And he cowardly shot him in the back. People say, oh, I'm sick of the cops. Good, let him die. How would you like it if it was somebody you knew, your neighbor, your dad? This guy had two children. He was involved in the community. He had a good record, and he's dead, executed. All these leftists that call for killing cops, you're against the death penalty for people found guilty, but you, it's okay for you if a cop gets killed. 
And I'll tell you something, it's because you've never been involved in real violence. You've never seen real stuff go down. And so your little kids thinking it's tough to sit around talking about killing people. It's not tough. It's not cool. And, when, and here's, here's the key. If things unravel in this civilization like it's starting to do, it's going to be you soft people out there and all you people on the left that want all these free government goodies. When the liberty's gone, when the prosperity's gone, the new world order is not going to take care of you. They have no respect for you. You're useless. You're stupid. As long as you stay under their control. I want you to be free. I want you to wake up. I want you to get involved. I want you to see outside the box. I want you to be empowered. I'm a prideful person. and I'm not saying that's good, but I have pride in humanity, pride in you, pride in myself. I want to believe in you. And that's why when I see MSNBC, MTV putting out weaponized media, saying only whites can be racist, being white inherently is bad, whites deserve what they get, blah, blah, blah. It makes me so sick because the people running that are consciously evil and have a plan to bring this country down. And you have movies like Django and all the rest of it that is meant to inflame racial division, meant to sell the idea that white people are inherently bad and that you've personally been wronged so you can go out and find some white people to kill. And that's the message that Hollywood wants to be put out, and it's all part of this climate being pushed with all these movies coming out at once, focusing on police oppression, focusing on police abuse, not because they're going to reform the problems that are real, that we've tried to reform for 20 years, but because they want to have a clash of civilizations. came out about a month and a half ago. It's already pretty much left the theaters, but I thought it was a very powerful film. It deserved to be recognized. It deserved to get some attention here. Because you find out that the vigilantes on the U.S. side and on the Mexican side are basically the same people. They have the same views, the same beliefs, the same desires. It's the opposite of a Robert Rodriguez movie where Don Johnson is dressed up as a white racist sheriff shooting pregnant West Mexican women in the stomach. That's not real. That's not going on. That's not happening. It's Mexicans that have killed over 100,000 Mexicans. But the political correct crowd would somehow try to imply that it was America's fault. That's why the White House, it came out in the memos, CBS News, three years ago. They shipped those guns down there so they could blame the violence on the Second Amendment. When the drug cartels are buying full auto from Europe and from the big banks. Turned out that a lot of those guns that got shipped down there ended up getting used by the citizens to fight off the drug cartels and to restabilize and take back control of the communities. The problem is the cartels then just kill the leadership of the good vigilante groups or have the government put them in prison and then take their number two guys who they've bought off and put them in charge. And that's the cycle of corruption. And it's happening here in this republic. And the system needs to cut it off now. We need to decriminalize drugs across the board now. That doesn't mean sell them to kids. It means treat them just like big pharma stuff. Control it. Tax it. Regulate it. It'll take the criminal element out. But the big central banks are the main ones running it. That's why they lobby to keep the drug war going. Police departments are addicted to the money as well. It's corrupted many police departments. It's going to corrupt the whole nation if we don't stop it now. I have a big announcement uh, I'm going to be making. I'm going to play this video that breaks it down. If we don't do this, I will be able to fund the launch of the info war to hundreds of UHF, VHF, and cable systems. We've got more than 50 that are showing interest. We've got six or seven that are already signed on, already currently taking it, just since we turned it on three weeks ago. Um, it's well worth it if we reach 50 UHF, VHF, and 50 cable systems. I think it'll be a lot more than that. We already have places like Houston. We're on basic cable. 
that's a huge feat, and uh, they also have a broadcast station down there.